Monsieur le Président. Mr. President of the 78th session of the General Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, Mr. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegations, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the great honor and privilege fall upon me on behalf of Mr. Patrice Talon, President of the Republic of Benin, to speak on behalf of him as follows, and I quote, it is my pleasure to start by expressing my warm congratulations to you, Mr. President, on your brilliant election to the presidency of the 78th session of the General Assembly and express my wishes to you of full success in accomplishing this great task. I take this opportunity to also address my congratulations to your predecessor, His Excellency Mr. Kazwaza Korosi, and Bena is very pleased to have seconded him as a vice chair and we'd like to congratulate him on the remarkable manner in which he presided over the work of the 77th session. I could not conclude my initial remarks without thanking His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, for his active and constant commitment to achieving the noble objectives of our common organization in the context of a number of pressing challenges today more than ever. Mr. President, here we are once again gathered in the context of the general debate, an annual meeting of the community of nations, not just to discuss burning issues of current affairs around the world, but especially to provide political orientation to make it possible to create a viable consensus as to the means of resolving these issues. Before I begin, I wish to address my warm greetings from my government and the Benin well, people as a whole. Benin is a nation that is attempting in an untirable manner to uncover to itself and for the entire world its potential, its advantages, and to fully play the score that is its score in the concert of nations in favor of a more united and prosperous humanity. Indeed, for more than seven years now, Benin has methodology methodically been implementing major reforms as set forth by two successive programs created by my government in order to achieve the SDGs. And efforts undertaken have thus brought us to a growth rate of beyond 4% in 2016, which it rose to 7.6% in 2019 and 2020. And to integrate, become a part of, through this growth, the middle-income country group. These results strengthen our conviction that underdevelopment is not a fatality and not fated. In order to ensure economic growth and to ensure that we are able to seek social development, my government has undertaken a number of measures to eliminate poverty, strengthen human capital. Untiringly, we seek to improve the living conditions of our people through the achievement of flagship and implementation of flagship programs and action in the area of urbanization, sanitation in our cities, access to energy and potable water, as well as education, health care. All of this is taking place in a peaceful political environment with a successful organization last January of legislative elections that were free and transparent and strengthen the plurality of our national political landscape. Despite the many achievements of my country, we remained aware of the many challenges, economic challenges especially, that persist, as well as what is at stake socially, and the risks in terms of security given the sub-regional environment. Mr. President, Benin is located in West Africa and must grapple with a series of complex challenges and a complex dynamic, especially in the area of security and political stability. Indeed, it's no secret to anyone that, politically speaking, the West African sub-region is in the grips of political instability and serious governance issues. Moreover, the security threat has intensified in a number of countries given the combined effects of terrorism, violent extremism, and piracy. Resolving these problems requires international and sub-regional cooperation as well as ongoing commitment 
to sustainable development and democracy. As a country of peace, Benin remains attached to the very ideals that prevailed at the creation of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, and at the sub-regional level and at the level of the Organization of the United Nations at the world level and will endeavor to make its contribution to solving these problems, all of which require an international response which is coordinated, and a strengthening of cooperation at the planetary level. Mr. President, the topic that brings us together today, rebuilding trust and reigniting global solidarity, accelerating action on the 2030 Agenda and its sustainable development goals towards peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. This theme is in perfect keeping with the SDG 2030 agenda and requires an assessment of our implementation of Agenda 2030 at this stage. In the very specific context of the world with a number of different crises, especially the alarming effects of climate change, the war in Ukraine and its consequences, political upheaval in a number of countries. With all of this in mind, we address this new session while humanity continues to face a number of complex challenges. Recent years have been particularly grueling for people around the world. Indeed, they have highlighted the fragility of our world in the context of globalization, the COVID-19 pandemic, and its ensuing consequences. In a world shaken by convulsion, broken by inequality, and defenseless against new threats, the United Nations must remain for all peoples of the planet as a beacon of hope, of solidarity and humanism, and we must preserve it at all cost and strengthen it. This theme returns us to our responsibility and commits us to once again renewing our faith in the ideals of the United Nations Charter. It reminds us of the urgency of collective action in order to find lasting and ideal solutions to the challenges of our time, the most pressing of which is achieving the SDGs between now and 2030. These challenges underscore more than ever the crucial role that needs to be played by multilateral institutions for our collective security and prosperity. Benin, therefore, supports all initiatives that will contribute to the strengthening and ambitious overhauling of world governance through appropriate reforms around three major pillars. First, overhauling the United Nations, which is our deepest wish, requires full recognition of the fact that our world has changed a great deal since 1945. And if we wish to uphold the promises of the Charter, United Nations governance needs to be reformed with, in a, with a view to adapting the organization to the challenges of our times. This is the time, then, for my delegation to renew its support for the reform agenda proposed and launched by the Secretary General in the areas of security, development, human rights, and peace. Moreover, the acute crises shaking the world and geopolitical changes which have taken place since 1945 require a recalibration of the balance of power in the United Nations, especially at the Security Council. And in this regard, Benin advocates for effective and immediate reforms to be undertaken, geared to making this body more representative and more effective, especially through increasing the number of representatives on the Council, be they permanent or non-permanent, in keeping with the African position as set forth by the El Zawini Consensus and the CERT Declaration. This overhaul should also take place at the level of the multilateral trade system with more equitable trade rules in place that would govern the international environment in such a manner as to favor developing nations. Production and creation of value added, access to markets, and inclusion in all parts of the worldwide value chain. Finally, it requires overhaul of the world financial architecture in the current context. No one qualifies the financial great 
break up or the world financial system. And it's difficult to juggle, effectively juggle, the impact of world crisis on southern countries in a way as to promote the proper development of the finance system and sustainable development. Halfway to the Sustainable Development Program and 2030, at this point we need to increase our chances of achieving the Sustainable Development Goals that we set for ourselves. And this requires an approach that goes beyond the classical mechanisms of aid to development. And we need to move towards productive direct investment at the lowest levels and over longer terms, as long as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, Mr. President, it's only with courageous reform that are supported by a political determination which is clear and affirm that we will be able to effectively face the great modern challenges that require our organization to play on its credibility and national public opinion, even on the international scene, and leverage that. And these challenges include inter alia, peace and security, including cybersecurity, democracy and human rights, access to water and energy in a sustainable manner which is respectful of the environment, health and education, fighting poverty and inequality, be they economic, social or other, climate change, biodiversity and the environment, food security, migration and many other items. These interconnected challenges require international cooperation. They require concerted action and innovative solutions to solve the problems of the modern world and to build a more sustainable and equitable future for all. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the credibility of our organization will moreover be judged by our aptitude to finally, in an equitable and lasting manner, bring peaceful solutions to issues that have been around for decades. And my delegation would like to address some of them at this point. First, peace and security in the Middle East, especially the Palestinian question. And here, Benin would reaffirm its unwavering support for diplomatic initiatives geared to creating a Palestinian state with full international sovereignty and living in coexistence, peaceful coexistence with the State of Israel. Second, the trade, economic, and financial embargo imposed on Cuba by the United States. My delegation is of the view that flexibility and lifting the embargo will allow the Cuban people to meet the many crises that are currently taking place on our planet. In this context, we call for specific measures to be taken towards definitively lifting the embargo and normalizing relations between these two countries, both of which are friends of Bina. The issue of Western Sahara is an issue that we believe deserves a definitive solution by leveraging the political process and what has been achieved in that progress under the auspices of the Secretary General of the United Nations in the context of implementing the relevant resolutions of the Security Council on this matter. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, the future of our organization, the United Nations, our common organization, depends on our collective responsibility to endow it with the means to strengthen itself and to strength contribute to the future of a world governance system that would be more inclusive, that upholds its promises and guarantees a better possible future for the people of the United Nations, especially young people. My delegation will continue to work with all countries that share this ideal. Thank you for your kind attention. End of quote.